today on Fixing the Money Thing. You can't run fast enough in the earth or system to be all that God created you to be. In this realm of the earth or system, everything is defined by what you do, not who you are. In the kingdom, everything is defined by who you are, not what you do. From a recent visit to Living Word Bible Church in Mesa, Arizona, Gary's message, The Power of Rest. I'm Gary Cassie. For nine years I had debt I couldn't pay, which brought on panic attacks, antidepressants, until the kingdom of God drastically changed my life. Now I wanna help you fix the money thing. America's financial coach, Gary Cassie, wants to mentor you in the kingdom principles that will set you free. If you put God's principles in place, you will prosper. This is Gary Cassie. Fixing the money thing. I'm here in sunny Florida, one of the most popular vacation sites in the United States, if not the whole world. People come here to find rest and sunshine, a break from the busyness of life, the busyness of making a living and surviving. But is there a place that we can find rest and peace without having to travel to Florida, to live a life of purpose and destiny without having to be burdened by survival and just paying the bills? I believe this is one of the greatest concepts in the Word of God, if not the greatest outside of knowing Jesus Christ, and that is the power of rest or the double portion, or as the New Testament calls it, the Sabbath rest, which is available to every believer. Unfortunately, most people, many people, have not discovered the principle of the power of rest. I had the recent privilege of ministering in Mesa, Arizona in Living Word Church. Dr. Tom Anderson, Marie and his wife, run a fabulous ministry there, and we were invited to speak on this very topic, the power of rest. It's also the title of my new book. It is probably, as I said, a concept that you must have. You must have. And so I am sharing with you that night that I was with them at Living Word Church, and I trust you'll find it as inspiring as it is true. Let's go there right now to Living Word Church. God's Word promises us the ability through the double portion to live a stress-free life, stay on assignment, and serve our purpose. From a recent visit to Living Word Bible Church in Mesa, Arizona, Gary's message, The Power of Rest. All right, so we talked about Genesis chapter three, that the earth curse came into the world and the only way to have provision was painful toil and sweat, right? Everyone's tired of painful toil and sweat. Yes? Yes. yes. You were never created to have that. That's why you, it's not normal. You have an assignment. Adam had to forsake his purpose in exchange for survival. 70% of US citizens do not like their jobs 33% literally hate their jobs. Tell me, why do they show up? Come on. Because have you ever heard someone say, I have to go to work? You have to go to work. You're a slave. What would happen if life became a passion and you had zeal for it and you couldn't wait till Monday, you hated Friday night? What would happen then? You'd become wealthy. That's what would happen. Because you would not have to go to work. You would be working, if you will, laboring with a passionate vision. And that's life is a whole lot different at that point. Is there an escape? Is there an escape from the earth curse system? Jesus demonstrated that throughout his entire ministry. Five Loaves and two fish feed 5,000 men, 20,000, can't women at 20,000, is that possible? When the disciples came to Jesus and said, we have a problem, these people are hanging around too long, we gotta send them away, we need to, you know, they need to go find some food, what did Jesus say to them? You feed them. And their immediate response would be, you're nuts, right? <laughs> Jesus said, go see what you have. Go see what you have. They reported back five loaves and two fish. How do you think they responded then? Whew, thought we had a problem there for a minute. <laughs> right? Five loaves and two fish do not do anything for 20,000 people. But Jesus took the bread, he blessed it, laid his hands on it, blessed it, it changed governments, changed jurisdiction. 
That's why it multiplied. It would not have multiplied if he had not have blessed it. All right? Then they passed it out. They had 12 baskets left over, right? Took care of all that. But their first response would be, when Jesus said, you feed them, they said, that would take eight months of labor. So you have been trained that way. You, you, have, you have learned to say no more than yes. I'm serious. Look, listen to yourself. I can't afford that. It's no, 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 no. Go into the store with your little kids. No, put that down. No. Buy that. No, can't have it. No, can't afford that. No, no, right? I know you're embarrassed to say yes because they, you know, <laughs> it's no because you've been trained that way because you filter everything, the possibility through labor. Oh, there's no way I could afford that because I don't have the potential. I work down at quick whatever shop thing and I make $10 an hour. I mean, okay, $10 an hour times 50 hours a week, whatever. There's no way I can afford that. See, you can't run fast enough in the earth curse system to be all that God created you to be. It'll never happen. I mean, some, very few, I think, I think it's like, Less than one half one percent of people make over hundred grand. I mean, just the fifty some percent of the people in the U.S. make thirty some thousand dollars a year. I am not opposed to anyone starting at any place in life, but forever thirty some thousand a year is not a life forever for your whole life, right? I mean, if you're if you're an, uh, an, if you're learning something, you're been placed under. You're you know you're just fresh. You're learning something. That's that's great. That's okay. But you don't want to stay there forever, right? And I'm not in any way trying to belittle anyone here that may be making thirty some thousand. I'm just saying there's more. There's more. All right. But you can't filter. The kingdom does not operate like you operate. How you've been trained to equate provision with labor. There was no labor attached to that bread that he fed those people with, right? Okay, so is there an escape out of this earth curse system back to a place where you can focus on assignment and have provision where you can find yourself? Because you don't have a clue who you are. The culture dictates to most people who they are. Uh, I was in Paris a while back, and the new color fad was black was the new black. All the windows had black. I mean, it's all black and gray, you know? Paris, fashions, you know, you know, you girls, you say green's the new black. I don't know, it's something, you know, you always say. But this year, black was the new black. Black and gray. And this is not an exaggeration. As I looked down the street, as far as the eye could see, hundreds of people shopping, every single, without exception, person had gray and black on. Not one, not one speck of color, not one. I mean, when's the last time someone told you their favorite color is gray? <laughs> the culture, people are bouncing, who am I? Who am I? Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who am I? I don't know who I am. If I ask you who you are, you'll tell me what you do. I am a real estate agent. I am a whatever. Because in this realm of the earth curse system, everything is defined by what you do, not who you are. In the kingdom, everything is defined by who you are, not what you do. You'll get this. It'll sink in for a minute. <laughs> All right, so there's an escape out of the earth curse system. We find it, there's lots of ways. But Hebrews chapter four, verse nine. I wanna focus on that. I get running down through here. There remains then a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who enters God's rest also rests from his own work, his own work, painful toil and sweat, his own work, just as God did, his. Now, this, there remains then a Sabbath rest. Well, pastor, that's, that's Old Testament. No, it's not. That's New Testament. That's Hebrews, right? Yes. There remains right now for you a Sabbath rest for the people of God. It says, for anyone who enters God's rest. What was that referring to? It was referring to creation, right? Come on, to help me out. At least I say yes, just say, I know you're there. Genesis chapter two, verse one through three, thus the heavens and earth were completed in all their vast array. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he'd been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. So Hebrews chapter four, verse six is referring to Genesis chapter two, right? He rested. 
Then he blessed the seventh day, made it holy because he, on it he rested from all his work of creating that he'd been doing. So was God tired? No. What does it mean he rested? It says everything was what? Completed. Everything was finished. Man was created at the end of the sixth day to live in the seventh day with everything complete, everything finished, everything he needed, everything was there, correct? So the Bible says it's still possible for you to enter into God's rest, which means everything completed, everything finished, everything there. There now still remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God, for anyone who does not lean to his own system of painful toil and sweat, but learns God's rest, can find a way of escape out of his rest and find a completion, a way of living that's above that painful toil and sweat system. Yes, amen.